Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. So, we are on the fifth week and this week completely I am focusing on technology and communication. We are on module 3 and in this module I am going to talk to you about some of the basic principles in which you have to use emails. Emails are electronic mails, so which you have been using frequently nowadays. Uh, if you look at the total number of lectures, we have already reached lecture number 27th with this. I am going to spend uh, a couple of lectures using uh, email as a focus point to talk to you about particularly about technology and how technology is actually trying to influence as in terms of soft skills and personality. Now, some of the highlights with regard to what I taught in the previous lecture. The previous lecture concluded particularly referring to the influence of mobile on human personality. I was telling you that it has already altered modified human personality just like the way technology in general has been making human beings cyborgs. This is also changed people. And in that sense, it has deviated from its main intention of saving time, but now it is consuming so much time. It has to help in emergency. Now, emergency people do not care uh, even when you call them on mobile. Distance connection, now actually distance connection is becoming on the one hand yes, but on the other hand it is creating problem with people who are nearby. People are so closely connected to people in distance, but they are completely forgetting those who are nearby. And it was invented to keep human relations intact, but actually it is uh, disintegrating human relations. So, I concluded by saying humans have become mobarks, that is mobile organisms, because they are using it before sleeping, after sleeping, they are using it for playing games, watching movies, using it for checking time, calculation, address, everything they are using it, uh, so that it has become an indispensable part of human beings so they cannot live without it. I gave a test of identifying what is your uh, mobile use level. Have you become really mobarks? And then uh, I asked you to respond to it depending on the degree of frequency that you are using, depending on the intensity and depending on number of questions you say yes, no. It was determining whether you have become really mobarks and most of us would have fallen under the category yes, we have become mobarks. And the next level I asked you to identify whether you have become addicted to mobiles or whether you are suffering from this nomophobia that is no mobile phobia. You cannot live without mobile anymore. Now, if you have reached that, I gave you some basic questions and if you all answered affirmatively by saying yes, 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 then you are also suffering from this obsessive compulsive disorder. You cannot live without it, you are obsessed with it. So much so, if somebody takes your mobile, you will get angry, you will become tense and if mobile falls into water, you will feel so depressed and you cannot live without mobile and you can live without human beings, but you cannot live without mobile. You can live without pets, you can live without uh, uh, reading, you can live without sleeping, but then it looks like you cannot live without mobile. So, I concluded that by giving you some suggestions for becoming human. First of all, I said that create some mobile free time. Let people know that 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hours or even at least 15 minutes your mobile will be switched off in a day and whatever thing they call they cannot reach you on mobile. Either they have to call you on landline or they have to use email or they can do anything else, but they cannot reach you on mobile. Let them know it is your sleeping time, it is your lunch time, it is your reading time, you are in library. So, you cannot be disturbed at all. So, keep it away also literally and figuratively, keep it in a distance all the time. So, do not make it an integral part, keeping it in heart is giving you cancer, keeping it in thighs is also giving bone cancer. So, literally try to put it in a handbag 
or a pouch and carry it separately. Use uh, various kinds of uh, speakers which are available if possible, so that you try to uh, keep it away from you. Treat it overall as a slave, not as a master who is trying to control you. And then do not use that as a substitute for other gadgets we were using such as watch, calculator or even map which we were using for finding address. So, till continue to use them and then uh, do not make mobile as the whole and soul of your uh, functioning. Finally, I concluded with some mobile etiquette, some norms, some social norms that govern the use of mobile. So, certain things I highlighted uh, was uh, telling you to avoid mobile if you can use face to face communication. If you are living in the same house and no need to send text message to uh, your mother or somebody to bring food upstairs. Okay. So, you can just go and call and if you are just sitting face to face again do not use uh, mobile at all. So, avoid it, minimize it as much as possible and when you use it be concerned about the other person particularly be empathetic about the other person's time. Do not hijack their time just because you want to pass time, do not intrude into their uh, time just because in your mobile button you can press and then immediately it calls somebody. Do not do uh, uh, such uh, activities which may annoy the person because it also tells something about your own attitude, your own sensitivity, your own concern for the other person in terms of using your mobile. Most of the times inadvertently we are using in a very aggressive manner and we do not care about others. So, soft skills actually tries to position you in such a manner that handle mobile in a soft manner, keep it in a silent manner, let the uh, let the mobile speak less. Uh, whenever it is in silent mode, you may miss some calls, that is ok. You catch up with those calls later, that is no problem. But when you are focused, let it remain in silent mode. I also said practice switching it off, especially in formal and very important uh, personal uh, relationship discussions. You have to put it in switched off mode because there is nothing more important than attending that particular event. For example, an interview. So, keeping your mobile frequently buzzing is very surely to get you eliminated from this because there are other candidates who are much more sincere than you. However, uh, good in your marks, however uh, extracurricular activities that you might have done and got medals and all that. It is at that point of time important that you show utmost sincerity to the person to whom you are attending. Last but not the least, I uh, concluded by saying that try to use email. If you can communicate with the person using email rather than calling the person again and again using your mobile and then taking the person's time away. If you can explain that on email simply and if the person is looking at it frequently, that is still a better mode. Now, having said that, this lecture and maybe uh, next two, three lectures are going to focus on this aspect of uh, using emails and then the question whether you are using emails properly. Now, before we go to how you should use emails and then I am going to discuss about some basic principles that you can follow using emails. Let us look at these quotations. The first one says, the greatest polluting element in the earth's environment is the proliferation of electromagnetic fields. I consider that to be a far greater threat on a global scale than warming or the increase of chemical elements in the environment. So, this quote is coming from Robert Becker, a two time Nobel Prize nominee. Now, the fact he is trying to highlight and then deliberately I have put the quotation at the beginning instead of the way I usually end my lecture with the quotation at the end because I want you to understand the shift that should happen in your thinking with regard to email use and generally with regard to mobile and email use. So, mobile use he says is proliferating, increasing the electromagnetic fields which are responsible for uh, causing all kinds of uh, harm to human beings as I said uh, cancer and other uh, diseases. But in case of birds, 
for example, uh, the small birds, the sparrows. So, they just die or they are not able to pass through this ones. Electromagnetic fields are affecting the path of honey bees. So, much research has been happening on that. So, the uh, Nobel Prize nominee is of the opinion that this is worse than global warming because that is happening at a gradual space, but this is imminent, this is happening immediately and we need to pay attention. The other one is from Marilyn O. Savant. So, she says email, instant messaging and cell phones give us fabulous communication ability, but because we live and work in our own little worlds, that communication is totally disorganized. Remember, we invented all these ones, email, cell phones to organize our communication and to shape up our lives in a better manner. But unfortunately, they are totally disorganized and not only they are dis disorganized, they make ourselves as also disorganized. Now, I am just going to give you uh, some basic principles in terms of soft skills and personality and at the same time you know that those are the skills which we can use it generally in terms of any communication aspects. I would like to call them as 5 P's because all these words are starting with the letter P and they are the cardinal principles of soft skills and personality development. The first one is planning, so you have to think ahead, you have to think about and then you have to make your decision before actually you reach a place, reach a spot and then do something. For example, exam, the simple one, you need to plan. So, what will be the syllabus that you will read during this time? In fact, you should have a proper schedule. So, what way are you going to handle questions? Will you answer the easy question first or you will go for one tough one, spend this much time? Will you do time planning? Will you uh, try to finish it 10 minutes before? How many pencils you will carry? How many pens you need to carry? What are the other things you will carry? Do you make a to-do list? So, planning and preparedness. So, once you plan that I should take all these ones. So, preparedness is your alertness. So, you plan to go to the swimming pool. So, you went there and then the person says, where is your swimming costume? So, you say, oh, I do not know that I have to use swimming costume for uh, swimming into the pool. So, you are told that without it you cannot come. So, you lack preparedness. Okay. Preparedness also in terms of any, any kind of proposal that you give, any communication activity that you are involved in terms of knowledge, in terms of knowing things, in terms of showing that you are ready. So, that is preparedness. The next level is persuasiveness. So, again you reach the spot, you show that you are prepared, but people are not willing to accept you. So, you should be able to use your communication ability to influence the thinking, persuade them, convince them with facts, convince them with examples that you are really capable of doing something or what you are trying to propose is something that is true. Now, when you do this, your presentability is also very important. Presentability is not just presenting things in a decorative manner, like even physically, personally presenting yourselves so nicely, nicely dressed and all that. Although dressing is going to give the first best impression, people are not going to judge the book by the cover. People are going to read what is inside, what is the content. So, so often you see a trailer and then you like the movie, thinking that the uh, trailer will tell you everything about the movie, but you go and then you are miserably disappointed in the first 10, 15 minutes because the content is not delivered in the most presentable manner possible. It is totally disorganized, there is no storyline. So, in short, even in terms of email communication, Presentability means you should be able to present it without any spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, paragraph spaces. It should be very pleasing for the eye to look, no dirty look that is produced overall. And lastly, perseverance, especially generally in terms of soft skills, you may fail, 
So, I am happy when I am reading from the forum that some of the participants they tell me that uh, they are happy, they are able to change their uh, habit, they remember their lessons, they try to do that. But then there are others who are saying that, so I am not able to follow it, can you give some more suggestions. So, this is the time you need perseverance. So, repeat. So, if you think that you are not able to get up at 5.30 and go for a walk, so if you started at 7.30, fine. So, next day try to go at 7, third day at 6.30 and slowly 6 and then move to 5.30. Overnight, you may not be able to do, but perseverance, continuing with whatever efforts that you have taken will take you near your goal and will fetch you success. Now, let us look at some of these principles, although they are general in terms of soft skills and personality development. Let us see how we can apply this in terms of looking at emails. And before I actually go to tell you the concepts, like the principles, the etiquette that you use, the norms that you should follow in writing emails, I just want to give you an experience of those emails who completely violate some of these norms of soft skills and some of the mails even some of you might have written to some people without knowing that you are writing such mails. Let us start by looking at some examples. Now, look at this first one. This is an email I received. It simply says, respected sir, my name is Amit Prakash. Okay, yes, put in capital letters, so I should know the name. I do not know what is the subject, what does this person want from me, who is this person, is he a student or a vendor or a distant friend of mine. I do not know anything about this person, why he has written this email, after that there was no contact, nothing with this person and if I wanted to contact him, except the email id that has come, there is no phone number, nothing and then uh, even if you look at it, in terms of presentability. So, use of uh, capital letters, for example, this R should be capital, S should be capital and then I would prefer a comma here. So, my M should be capital letter and this I do not want in capital letters and then there is a full stop indicating that the sentence is ending. Now, he is not able to uh, tell the purpose why he wrote and whether he really wanted to write it to me or somebody else, it was not clear. Let us look at uh, some more examples and you can analyze the following situations. I have identified one situation and you should tell me what is lacking and what can be improved. Now, in places like IITs, we have this instructor that is the teacher offering a course and then the students have to request the teacher to take the course. It is purely up to the instructor's prerogative whether to allow your student to take a course or not. So, these are some situations which I faced with some of my students, but I have changed the name slightly some modified situations to make you understand how email is playing a role or how soft skills which are accompanying the email situation is playing a crucial role. And you will understand what I mean by soft skills when I explain this. Look at the situation. Sanjay has come to the instructor's office to request for course registration. That means, Sanjay wants instructor's sign to do his course. After some discussion and putting some conditions about attendance and discipline, the instructor agrees to take him in the course. He asks Sanjay, see uh, you should understand that before taking, so here the instructors ask whether the student is really interested and then they allow. Allowing itself is a big thing for student because it is very difficult to get good courses. So, Sanjay has got the course almost, the instructor decided to give him. He asked Sanjay to write an application and get his approval. Sanjay looks at the papers kept in the instructor's printer and asks him, give me a paper. After the instructor gives Sanjay a paper, Sanjay asks him, give me a pen. The instructor says, get out of my room and I will not permit you to join my course. Now, why did the instructor who accepted to take Sanjay in his course refuse to take him later? Obviously, you know when he 
accepted, he thought that he has planned well, he has prepared and he also knows how to present it by writing neatly. But even if you look at the request that this person is giving, so he simply says, give me a paper, not please give me a paper, sir. Okay, it is not in a request form, it is like almost suggesting like a command lacking in soft skills. So, he is at the receiving end, but then he is uh, commanding the other person to give it to him. Not only that, first of all, if he is going to ask for a course, he should go with a paper and pencil and then write the application himself, which he failed to do. So, planning is not there, preparation is not there, presentability is not there. Now, he can persuade. Okay. So, he can say, sir, I am sorry, so I, I, re, I made a mistake, so please do not feel bad about what I have done, I apologize, I will just come in 5 minutes. So, he can go out, get another one, write neatly, again apologize and then tell the instructor that he will not repeat that. That could have changed it, that is what I meant by perseverance. But if you look at the instructor's part, is the instructor justified in doing so? Now, the answer is yes and no. So, if the instructor himself is not concerned about soft skills, he is not justified. If let us say, if I am in the instructor's shoes, I am playing his role and I also want the students to learn soft skills. So, then I would rather make the student realize what mistake he did. Because the next question which I have asked, did Sanjay know the reason for the instructor's change in behavior? Unless the instructor tells the person, this is why I am angry, people who lack in soft skills would not even know what changed the instructor's behavior. And especially if the person is not empathetic, he would not understand why he is getting angry with me unnecessarily. Okay, I am just, uh, I just asked a paper, if he wants he can give, but why is he getting angry with me? So, can't he give me a paper? Will Sanjay be able to avoid this situation in future? Absolutely no, if he is not developing his soft skills, if he is not developing empathy, if he is not being told, if he is not creating a self-awareness, he cannot change. He will continue with the same kind of mistake, he will continue to go to instructor without pen and paper, he will continue to ask in a commanding tone and the instructor will continue to talk to him like this, unless a friend points out, unless somebody tells him to change. Let us look at more uh, situations which will make it clear. Uh, look at uh, this one and tell me whether the instructor will approve of this request. Rohit was in a hurry to get the course approved. He was already late for registration. Now, he rushed to the instructor's office, he banged at the door, then he barged in. There were some students sitting before the instructor. He pulled a chair on his own and sat. He put his application above other ones and said, sign I am in a hurry, I want to take this course. Now, if you look at it, obviously, uh, uh, will the instructor approve of this request? No, because his hurriedness shows that he is not planned or prepared at all. And then even while going there, he is not presenting himself in a proper manner. He is just banging which is not soft skills, which is showing that you are aggressive, you are rough, uncivilized, barging in without requesting may I come in is again showing your uncivilized behavior. And then there were some students sitting, so then you be in the queue. So, he rushed and then pulled the chair and then sat and then he put his application above other ones and then he is requesting, but then he is commanding and then instead of saying, sir, will you please sign on this? I am in a hurry, that is why I, I want to get this done before, but I am very much interested in your course, I want to take this. So, instead of putting this in a polite manner, the entire aggressive behavior, the way in which he is presenting himself will again make the instructor disapprove uh, this request also. No instructor is uh, likely to allow him to take this course if he will behave like this. Now, look at the next one. So, I said previous one, they were, the guy was lacking in soft skills. Now, in this case, Manish and Harish gently knocked at the door of the instructor. So, the gentleness is indicating that, okay, they are polite and politely asked, may we come in, sir? 
Oh, this is really impressive, very nicely presented. Once the instructor said, yes, come in, they went in saying, thank you, sir. So, again impressive. So, the instructor was also impressed, impressed by their good manners, the instructor allowed them to take their seats. Again, they thanked the instructor. When the instructor said, what do you want? They humbly said that, sir, we want to take your course and want your permission for it. Have you written the application? The instructor asked. Yes, sir, please take a look and approve of it. Now, at the outset, it looks like they are very good in soft skills. They are planned, they are prepared, they are presenting in a nice manner. They are even persevering by trying to put the request politely. Will the instructor accept this? Or if he is not accepting, what could be the reason? Actually, I am saying he is not going to accept it. Why? Look at the reason. The instructor's response, the instructor looked at it and got angry with them. Despite their polite manners, he shouted at them and refused to sign on the letter. What went wrong? They were polite, they were having soft skills. So, uh, all the uh, qualities that I said was there, but what went wrong? What went wrong was this, the instructor's name is Professor Rajeshekar and they wrote Professor Rajeshwari. Now, Professor Rajeshwari and Rajeshekar are working in the same department. So, they confused uh, this person with uh, the lady's name. Now, the instructor got angry and then everything they went with, planning, preparedness, presentability, everything collapsed with this one small mistake and completely revealed their planning is poor, the presentability is not relevant and then they were not really prepared, they were not even knowing who is the instructor for this course? Is it Rajeshekar or Rajeshwari? So, they had no idea. So, when they had no idea, obviously the instructor got angry and he wanted to uh, not accept their request. Now, watching this, there were two other smart students. So, they wanted to get the course somehow or other. So, this is Chanko and Manku. So, they are the smart students. They knew that the instructor is impressed with polite behavior and that his name has to be written correctly. So, they wrote the name correctly okay, and then they went very politely, they asked sir may we come in and all that. So, the instructor was also pleased, but at the end still the instructor refused. Why? So, here they wrote uh, the name correctly, they had all the pleasing mannerisms, but why did the instructor say no? Because they wrote the course number CHM 455. So, CHM 455 indicates a course in chemistry instead of writing ENG 455. So, they wanted the instructor to give this course in English and they went to the English instructor, but they wrote the course number wrongly. This annoyed the instructor, irritated. Again, whatever they did, even including writing the instructor's name correctly, got defied, completely uh, dismissed by this another silly mistake. So, this is what I mean by planning, preparedness, presentability and one small mistake you make, everything collapses, even though you might have developed good soft skills, so it can go wrong. Let us look at one more uh, situation before I conclude this and see whether you can improve the situation. Now, finally, with great difficulty some students got the course. But three of them dropped due to timetable clash, they had other issues, but none of them informed this to the instructor. Now, this is a bad thing. So, you got it with great difficulty and then you are just leaving it and then you need to tell the instructor so that those who are in waiting can be given a chance. When the instructor wrote to them, one of them replied as follows, instructor's mail is this. Uh, he wrote, Dear students, your names have not been finally registered. Let me know if you have dropped from the course. This will help me to give chance to other students in waiting. Please inform by email immediately. So, warm wishes, instructor's name. Student responded like this, Yes, sir, I have dropped the course, sir, for the inconvenience. Now, can you improve on the situation? Can you think that how better you can write a mail? On the one hand, it looks like out of the three students, at least this student responded to the instructor. But on the other hand, it looks like it is better than not to respond by giving a mail like this. 
so bad in planning, so bad in presentation and creates a very worst impression about you. Now, compare A with B. So, then you will be able to understand uh, what I mean by this. Students response, yes sir, fine. I have dropped first of all D small letter and then P E E D. So, dropped single E. The, there is no need for capital there. So, small t the course. Sorry, y is missing. For the inconvenience, again another spelling mistake, there is no full stop. So, it is again written in this mobile kind of language, SMS texting kind of language, which does not suit email when you write to somebody in a formal manner. Now, look at another response from another student and compare and you will know the difference. Look at the second response, dear sir. Now, the previous person did not begin with a salutation. This student begins with dear sir. So, the even the angry person feels little bit reduced in uh, anger. I am very sorry. This again reduces the anger further, annoyance further. I am very sorry for my delayed reply regarding the course dropping. So, he has said the fact clearly. So, it reduces uh, the anger completely. I had applied for another course. He tells the reason why he is dropping, whose request was accepted very late. So, it is not his fault, but the course uh, request in the other one was accepted late. So, I am dropping the course. I regret for any inconvenience caused. So, again he apologizes. So, I feel bad, he says, if I had caused you any inconvenience. He writes the name, he gives the roll num. So, when you juxtapose, keep the bad one with the good one, you realize what I try to tell you in terms of the email principles that you should be following. All the 5 P's that I discussed should be followed, but at the same time they are not enough. They ought to be really governed by the basic principles, even things like spelling, grammar mistake, writing the number correctly, putting the salutations appropriately. These things are going to matter. So, that you keep in mind and then in the coming lecture, I am just going to highlight how not to send emails because before you learn how to send emails, it is important to unlearn your wrong learning by knowing first how not to send emails. My attempt in the course as you might have noted is to make you redo and undo so many of your learnings which you have learnt wrongly and then imbibed as a bad habit in you and without even knowing that they have become bad habits and then you have been using it for uh, such a long time inadvertently. Now, my uh, challenge is to unearth and make you unlearn those things and then make you learn this ones correctly. So, in the following lecture again I am going to give you bad emails or how not to send emails before I go to the other two lectures on how to actually send good emails, what are the etiquette that you should be following. Thank you for watching this video, I will get back to you in the next lecture as how not to send emails. Thank you once again.